Hey everybody and welcome to Built Not Bought Campers. So today, I bet you can't guess what vehicle we're working on. Yep, you're right, it's traffic. So, the roof is complete, totally complete. Well happy with that as you already know. Had a bit of trouble with the rear bumper, but that's in another video. And you're probably wondering why I'm waving bits of wood about. Right, so today's little project yeah not so little but today's project is going to be the actual roof of the van um what i want to do first is put the battens in to attach the tongue and groove to now the way i'm going to do the ceiling on this is quite different to how most people would probably do it but i've come up with a little plan let my creative juices flow a little bit and um, it's going to be difficult to explain um, but the battens going across the roof of the van are going to be in one, two, three pieces going across but then I'm going to have two long ones going all the way along um, in the centre. It's difficult to explain, do you know I'm not even going to try but the best thing for me to do is actually show you. You've seen me cut loads of wood. So I'm going to get these cut first, and once I've cut these, I'll come back to you. I'll see you shortly. Right, okay, let me explain. So, we're going to be putting a piece of timber here, and then one across the centre, underneath there. Problem is, there's a big dip in there, which I need to sand out. And I've done a test piece, which is this, and it sits just over that. So what I've got to do is sand the centre or take out the centre of each piece. This is what a spindle sander is. And that took out that there. So I need to do four pieces like this, hence I'm using a dust mask, because it does get very, very dusty here. So there you go, it creates a lot of dust, but it does it quite quickly. Let's show you in the van. So there you go, it goes to the natural curve of the van as well, because a little bit of spring. Once I've actually screwed that in place, that won't be going nowhere. That just leaves me one, two, hold on. Two, three. Oh, just two more. Not too bad at all. That's the only thing with that machine does create a lot of dust. Anyway, that's all three pieces done. So what I wanted to show you how it was going to be, 
So we'll have one on each side like this. That's the center bar. So the cladding will be cladded over here to this edge. And then there'll be another one of these supports going all the way along. And on the inside of that, or maybe not even that, maybe just on the inside of this, will be an LED light strip. But I'll get all the battens in first Right, let me explain what I've done. So I put a little cross brace here, a little one here. Obviously the fan's in the way there. There's a little one here and a little one here. Okay, let's move now to the front. Right, so here, put a short one here and long ones in the middle. Now, as you can see in the middle there, I've had to notch out that on every one because there's a bulge in the roof. So that's given me like a stepped roof. And I've put these cross braces going from front to back. I haven't finished off at the back yet. I've got as far as there. I've just got to go to the back with it. So what's gonna happen is, cladding's gonna come over here and it's gonna overlap a bit here because behind here on each side will be strip LEDs. And that's to hide, and the cladding will hide the LEDs and all you will see will be the diffuser um, and this timber is the same width as the LED channels so it's going to give a nice finish so I've done both sides there so all I need to do now is finish off the back bit So what I've decided to do is drop all the cables over this side here where the kitchen starts because there's going to be a high wall there. Double skin wall, shallow wall where all the cables are going to drop down from the ceiling into the floor. Um, might even make an access panel on there or an access, some way of accessing it just in case somebody needs to get to the cables. You know, for maintenance, whatever. Or add something else. So I think that's where all the switches, everything's going to go over there. I've already... Um, fed the cables over the battens towards that corner um, it's a case of just um, working out what else we need in the roof and what I'm going to do is label all these cables because I've got a label maker, you don't have to use a label maker, but I will, you can just wrap a bit of tape around it and write on it what the actual cable is going to be connected to. So as part of our project for the ceiling, we need to put up these aluminium channels and they need to go along this bar here. So it will look a bit like, sorry for the shaky camera footage, so that's where they're going to be fitted. Right, so I've put one of the LED channels up along here. And all I've got to do now is drill three more. Uh, put, put another one that side and put two over that side. And then cut the last little length to put up the end there.
the last little piece to go up on this side. Right, so there you go. Channel is completely up on that side. The only thing left to do is this side. Right, I'm gonna carry on with the other side tomorrow. Time's getting on now. Time to shut up shop and go home. Hello and welcome back to the second day of the ceiling installation on the traffic. On oh, such a glorious day, look at the weather behind me. Anyway. Today we're going to carry on with the other side LED lights that I didn't finish yesterday. So I'm going to do a time lapse of that so you can see what I do, how I do it. So let's crack on. So that channel's in as well, all the way along. Right, so now that's in, we're gonna stick the LEDs in the channel. Right, so these are the LEDs. It says there's 16 million colors, brightness adjustment. Something I just got off of eBay. Or was it Amazon, one or the two. Um, they're a five meter strip. I've already unboxed it and hooked it up actually. So there it goes. You come with a strip, the controller, and it has got a QR code on there for the app, so it can be controlled by the app. The remote control sensor. Set of instructions and a basic remote control. And a little pack of fixings so you can attach the LEDs up. These, there's some little plastic clips in there which you can't see very well. So you can use them to put the LEDs up with as well. So let's have a look at them working with a remote control. Right, so what we got? Let's turn them on. And you've got loads of colours on here. You can go through. You can have them flash, strobe, if you want to give yourself an epileptic fit, you've got fade, and this one's called smooth.
Don't look very smooth to me, but hey ho. Right, so let's go. Let's set it on. Let's set it on. I tell you what, on a blue. Blue. So you can dim them down. So they're almost off. Go as bright as you like with these. Quite bright as well. As we're going to be powering it from the back of the bus, we need to put the connections at the back end. So I'll start from the front end with this end and work my way back. So there you go, the LEDs are stuck in the channel. Now when I switch them on, as I did before, you can see it's the little spots. Once I put the diffuser on, you'll see. Right, that's the overhang that I've left at the back here. So that will be hidden. strip lights are working perfectly so I'm dead happy with that anyway that is the roof ceiling video for now um, I'm gonna leave it there I think if I do any more to this ceiling and put it out as one video it's gonna be so long so this is part one of the ceiling installation on the traffic. Um, I'll give you some food for thought on the lights and how this is going to look. Let me know what you think in the comments and let me know if you'd have done it any different or what you would have done. I like doing things different anyway, so I hope you've liked it. On that note, stay safe, stay well, stay happy and bye for now.